Last summer I received a very special bespoke request. A Norse paganism practitioner approached me with a Viking-inspired crown in mind. They told me their personal journey and how this headpiece would help them reconcile with a somehow lost part of themselves. This is just the story of how I made their dreamed piece come to reality. As always that I work bespoke, I had a conversation with my customer about their preferences on design and materials. They were totally sure about some details, like the Yggdrasil rune being featured somewhere in the crown. We decided on going for brass and copper wire for the main body and brown leather for the base. The idea was to make it look antique, so lots of aged gold details went on this piece. I began working on the base. I happily had some strips of 2.5mm thick leather that were perfect width, so yeah, for low waste projects. None of the strips that I had was long enough to create the base loop, which meant I had to join two. So I cut them to half the length I needed. To prepare the strips for hand sewing later on, I needed to reduce and round the edges. Somehow I thought it was a good idea to leave the leather base unfinished at this point and moved on to make the main four braids with the school square brass wire. And you can see me really struggling to bend it into shape here. After a while of wrestling with this, I realized I had these other bigger, sturdy pliers, which made my life way easier. After preparing the four wire pieces, I went back to the leather base. I first stitched the two strips together to create a loop using a compact zigzag stitch. Now you can see how I seem to sew the edges with no thread. Well, what I'm doing is actually piercing them, because I'll be lining the base by hand. This way I already have regularly spaced holes to do my hand stitching. Last thing I need to do on the wires before I attach them to the leather base is to curve them so they accommodate to the wearer's head. This wire is certainly sturdy. It will make a very stable crown once it's all mounted. After that, I used paper clips to stabilize each wire piece on the leather loop in the final position. I decided I wanted to sew them all with copper wire. Since punching holes on leather is not reversible, I needed to make sure everything sat right where it should before proceeding. Once it's all sitting nicely in position, it was all literally sewing and singing.
After everything was firmly secured into place, I decided to set some studs on areas that looked kind of empty or that I felt could benefit from a sort of reinforcement, like the areas where the brass might end. I used my very handy press to set the studs. This machine does marvels to set eyelets and studs effortlessly and with the cleanest, sleekest finish. To hide all the copper stitches and backs of the studs, I prepare a gross grain ribbon as the lining for the crown. It's meant to protect the hair and the skin of the wearer from all these metallic bits. I took the chance of the lining to set one of my textile labels, of course. I used my wonder clips to set the gross grain ribbon into place to go ahead and hand stitch it. It's all back stitched since it will have to stand a lot of rubbing from skin and hair. And last but not least, the Yggdrasil runes. I had to specially order these from another artisan and they couldn't look any better in color and shape with the rest of elements. I'm so happy with them. I decided to hand sew them using wax thread for extra strength. The leftovers were carefully knotted and hidden in between the lining and the leather.
Several days and some months after my customer and I began working on this project, this Norskin crown was finished. It's one of those pieces I'll always remember with joy and gratitude. It was so special being the hands through which someone else made a dream come true.